Hey, good afternoon, guys. This is Sam, and I'll be kicking off the introduction to candlesticks. Uh, so this is actually one of my favorite topics. Uh, this is actually the first thing I ever learned um, regarding technical analysis. Um, I just want to start off with a quick story here. Um, I went to college for um, finance and economics. I went to the University of Texas. Um, going into it, I thought that they would teach me how to be a trader uh, in school. And so I paid very close attention in class and I learned nothing. Um, I didn't learn anything valuable. Um, so my original way of thinking, and if you're new, this probably is very similar to, to the way that you're thinking, is that the market moved on fundamentals, right? That the market moved because uh, this company had a great product and it was going to sell a bunch and it was going to go up. Um, and that's partially true. Um, of course, that helps. But what I found out very quickly was that that's not the case. What actually moves markets is um, it's mechanical. Right, it's a lot more mechanical. Um, it has a lot more to do with positioning, and it has a lot more to do with psychology. Right, and in my opinion, I have found no tool um, that more accurately and quickly shows you the psychology of a market than candlesticks. Um, so when I first started, I was reading Ben Graham and you know the Intelligent Investor and how to read a balance sheet. Um, none of that matters. And here's why. Here's the beautiful thing about candlesticks. Um, the candlesticks that, sh that, that you see on your charts, um, they are essentially the footprints in the sand of, 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 of folks that know a lot more than we do, right? So let me just share with you the one thing that was kind of a aha moment for me in, in college that just made me give up on fundamental analysis completely. And that is, what edge do you have in fundamental analysis? Well, the answer is none. Frankly, uh, you have no advantage. Uh, there are there are hedge funds that run billions of dollars, billions, many billions. Uh, they have million dollar uh, analysts. They have a army of these analysts. Um, they have insiders. They have everything. They have every edge over you. You have no edge against them. Not playing that game. So where do we have an edge? Well, we have an edge in reading the chart and understanding the footprints that these intelligent, well, I don't, I don't want to say intelligent, they're not always intelligent, uh, that these knowledgeable actors are taking, right? So just a quick prelude into the session here, um, just giving you an, a little bit of a backstory, uh, more than anything, just really putting the ball back into the court of the technicals, because that is as much edge as we're going to be able to have in this market. So with that out of the way, um, let me just dive into some candlesticks here. Um, hmm. Where do I start? Where do I start? Let me start here. So I'm going to share this with you. It's just a framed poster that I have on my wall here. And what I'm going to do after I show you this poster is I'll talk about the, 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 the poster. I'll talk about the candlestick patterns. But then what I'm going to do to really kind of give you a leg up is I'm going to give you or I'm going to show you. I can't give it to you, but I'll show you the book that helped me the most. So if you want to front run me on the book, uh, we're going to be talking about Steve Nyson. Um, it's literally the very first book on technical analysis that I read, and it really isn't even technical analysis per se. Um, it's strictly on candlestick patterns. It's, it's a great book. Um, I have no regrets reading it. I have actually haven't done a lot of reading in my life. Uh, I can tell you that because, um, you know, I've proven what I know, so it's okay for me to say that I'm a terrible reader, but this is one of the books that I did read. So I'm going to share this one with you. Let me get this, uh, sent over here. So this is kind of the idea of what I'm going to be showing you here. Um, and again, you know, we're not going to be doing a deep dive in any of this stuff. I just want to kind of get your beak wet on it, uh, should tell you why it's been so important for me, um, and then kind of give you really good resources where if you do want to take a deep dive, you can have those. And then you can come back to me in two weeks, and we can talk about what, uh, what you've learned, any questions you have, patterns that you see, things like that. So this is what I have up on my wall here. And uh, Notice a, a, notice a lot of these patterns here. Sorry, my marker went crazy there. Uh, notice a lot of these patterns are multi-candle patterns. So for example, let me just start with one that I think we might all know. And that is, um, where is it going to be? Looking for the hammer. So you see the hammer pattern here? This is a really common pattern. It kind of looks like this. Um, and again, you know, I'm just here to get your beak wet on this. Hopefully, you can kind of... Uh, Go from there. Notice that a lot of these patterns are multi-candle patterns, right? So the, the weight of this one candle here, what is this one candle telling you? 
when you see this candle and it's in a series in a downtrend, right? So this is your downtrend. And then you see that candle there. What are you seeing? From a psychological perspective, this one candle right here, just, and it's, it's kind of funny, right? It's, it, they're called Japanese candlesticks. And the Japanese language is based on symbols, right? I, I can't read it. You probably can't either. But we know that it's based on symbols. Um, and the a certain symbol means house or certain symbol means person. Well, what's kind of cool about the candlesticks is they're a language onto themselves. And this one candlestick, in the context of a downtrend, tells you something. Can somebody just briefly tell me what it tells you? Yeah, exactly. The lows are being rejected. Uh, it's a potential reversal. Buyers are coming in, et cetera. And how do you know? Well, you have a context of a downtrend, right? Then you get this big wick at the bottom and a very small body, right? So the, the wick, it just means the low. This is the absolute low of the day. This is the absolute high of the day. This would be the open and this would be the close, right? So you have a big ranging day, but do you see how the wick indicates that the buyers came in at the last second and pushed it up and it actually closes either flat slightly positive or very slightly negative but this wick is the tell this is a reversal pattern right basically think of it like a spinner in dominoes right you have a uh, dominoes that are kind of going like this and then all of a sudden you put a spinner and you flip it this way you just flip the direction of the trend so this is one of the more common ones here's the cool thing about it let's say that you had the other thing going let's say you had an uptrend something like this, and then you have this at the top of the uptrend. What does that mean? Well, contextually, it means the exact same thing, just in reverse, right? In this instance, um, buyers didn't come in until the very, oh, actually, I should redraw this. This is not an ideal one. I should redraw it. Let me redraw it, because we want it to look more like a shooting star. So it'll look more like this. And do you see how that hammer, which is the pattern right here, in the context of an uptrend, right? So just real brief, the hammers just basically reverse your short-term trend. Um, you can have one that looks like this, but in the context of a downtrend, it is still a bullish pattern. In this context, it's the exact same thing. You had, you had buyers reaching for the sky, right? Basically taking out that day's high. They reach for the sky, and then they end up getting closed below. Can you see how this one candle can give you a psychology of the market? Because let's just kind of talk about the psychology here. This is probably where I can give you an edge. Uh, you can read about all this stuff yourself, but just understanding it from a psychological point of view is really important. You have an uptrend, and then you get a big old shooting star. If you want to see one of these live, go look at TLT. Look at the all-time high on TLT, and you'll see one. And so just think about the psychology here. You have an uptrend. You take out this day's high. And then everyone who bought in this wick is trapped. Do you see how they're all, when it closes here, they're all trapped? Do you see the psychology of trapped people creating the resistance that this candle implies? Pretty cool stuff, right? Pretty cool stuff. And this is just one of the easier ones. Um, here's another one that everybody knows. Bullish engulfing. It's right there. So basically, it looks like this. You'll have a down day. Let's just make it pretty big. Let's say that this is negative uh, down day. So again, the key thing here for anyone who's new, this is your high. This is your low. This is your open for a down day. And this is your close. Okay. So that would be your, your one candle there. But then let's say that you had another, the very next day, you had something that looked like this. Maybe it has a little wick and maybe just a tiny little wick there, right? Do you see how this one candle, the second candle, eats essentially? You see how this candle is kind of eating or engulfing this other candle here? That is also, uh, that's a bullish pattern. Basically, you took all the negativity from this day of like, oh, it opened kind of high and it closed kind of low, kind of crappy. And then you completely obliterate it by engulfing it in a bullish way. And here's the cool thing. The bearish version is exactly the same, just opposite. So you just flip these two candles. Okay, so those are two real easy ones. Uh, those are kind of the first ones that you'll encounter. Um, hopefully you can spot these just immediately. But the main thing to stress is that these are multi-candle 
uh, stick patterns, right? So one candlestick alone is not enough. Typically, you need at least one or two to confirm. But the main thing that I want to stress to you guys is just the basic understanding, number one, and then number two, to use these candlesticks to speak to yourself in a psychological way so that you understand the psychology of the participants in the market. So I can cover another one if you guys want. If you see anything here on the chart, I'll zoom in a little bit more. If you want me to cover any specific pattern but if not let me just show you the, the the book that i'm referring to here if you want a deeper dive i certainly recommend reading this one um i read his i read this one and i read this one and i think this is just the follow-up in reality I, I i would recommend reading all his stuff i'm pretty sure i've, re I've read all of it i just haven't touched it since college so I'll leave you with this, um, and it's going to be the candlestick charting techniques. Uh, this is someone who I can confirm is quite good, um, very, very knowledgeable. Steve Nyson, you can find it on Amazon, or looks like you might be able to find it right there for free. So um, I certainly recommend it. Uh, let me uh, actually just do a quick Google search here with you guys, and then we'll just talk about some easy patterns to recognize, right? Because if we can get you to understand just um, some common patterns, then you'll, uh, you'll have a good basis to read the book and build up from there. Actually, here you go. This is basically uh, what's on my wall, isn't it? It's not as nice. Which one do we talk about? Mm -mm -mm. All right, I'm not going to talk about any of these. There's just there's too many choices. Let me just show you one more here. So I showed you the uh, kind. Of, I'll, I'll show you kind of the uh, the greatest hits, if you will. So the first one that we looked at. Let's go back to uh, Amazon here. Uh, the first one that we looked at was the hammer. Then we looked at the bearish version of the hammer, which is called a shooting star. After that, we looked at the engulfing. And then we talked about the bearish version, which is the bearish engulfing. But let's talk about a neutral pattern. So you have an uptrend. And then you get one of these. How often have you guys seen these patterns before where it looks almost just like a perfect cross? Um, that one is uh, called a doji. Right, a really common pattern. Dojis, as opposed to the ones that we've seen so far, basically just indicate indecision, right? And again, from the psychological point of view, you can see the balance and indecision within that candle because you typically have kind of a balance in terms of your wicks. You see how that wick's kind of balanced, equal parts. And then the open and the close are basically the same. So you had a big push up, a big push down, but you open and close basically at the same place. So that's called a doji. Basically just means neutrality or indecision. In the context of a trend, if you see a doji like this at the top of a trend, it is a good opportunity to start looking for a potential reversal. Because the question is, this is bullish, this is bullish, this is bullish, this is bullish. Why is this neutral? So is it enough to, to sell? No, it's not. You got to put it all together. Um, but it should get your attention as something that's like, hey, wait a second. That's a little bit more neutral than... Uh, than, than would be suggested. Here's another one. This is just the exact same thing in reverse. Downtrend. Oh, that's a little big. I'll just go ahead and turn that into the doji. And then you get that, right? And so again, big range, high to low, but you end up opening and closing basically at the same exact level. Again, you had trend, right? Very good trend. And then you get an indecision candle. What should that do for you in terms of your trading? Should it get you out of the trade? No. Should it get you uh, to do anything? Not quite, but it should get your attention. It should be a yellow flag, right? So the main things to understand is which ones are yellow flags, which ones are green flags, um, and which ones are, um, are red, uh, red flags, yellow flags, and what flag am I missing? Yellow, red, green. You know what I'm saying. Um, so um, let's just talk briefly here about the difference between a doji and a hammer. 
And just again, using these two easy examples as uh, as kind of a uh, caveats for the whole idea. So first up, the doji downtrend. Then you get hit with a doji. And then the hammer downtrend. Then you get hit with a hammer. Which one of these is a stronger reversal pattern in a vacuum? Yep, you got it, Sam. It's a hammer. It's a hammer. They're both yellow flags. This one is more of a yellow flag, right? It's neutral. But it should get your attention because you're, you know, you had a you had a nice downtrend, nice easy path. And then all of a sudden, there's like a speed bump here in the form of this doji. Is it enough to get off the road? Probably not, but it's enough to get your attention. Here, you have the same downtrend, but you get hit with a much different candle here. This one has a little bit more strength to it, and therefore, maybe it's somewhere between yellow and red, red light, if you will. But it should definitely get your attention. If you see one of these in the context of a short, if you're short and you see one of these, it doesn't mean you have to get out, but it does mean you have to pay a lot extra attention because if the next candle closes higher, and here's the thing, I've been showing you single stick candlesticks because it's an intro. They're, they're multi-sticks, right? So you, you have to keep an eye on the next day. And if the next day closes higher, like this would imply, then you have two candles working together. And then at that point, it becomes more of a red flag if you happen to be short in that market. So again, just a little bit of a primer here. I won't go too much more than that. Um, if you want to take a, a little bit of a screenshot of my, of my cool uh, chart there. All right, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, but I think that pretty much is, uh, is enough to wet your beak and uh, get you uh, started with the Steve Nice and stuff. If you guys read his stuff uh, and you like it, I, um, I can almost guarantee you'll like it. Um, but if you read his stuff and you have any questions, I'm always here to help. And I love talking candlestick patterns. I don't think we do that enough here. Um, you rarely will see people here at Simpler discussing individual candlestick patterns, but you will see us discussing can candlesticks as a whole. So here's the last little bit that I'll leave you with. Each one of these candlesticks is like a word. Right, It's like having a word in a sentence. So for example, let me just use the hammer since everyone is pretty comfortable with that. You know, let's call this, uh, you know, caution. Let's just say that, that that word equals caution. Well, oftentimes you will not see us talk about an individual candlestick pattern here. You may see me do that every once in a while, but what we actually end up doing is looking at them as a, as a group right, as an entire group. And so if this word means caution, or if that symbol means caution, what we try to do at Simpler is combine all the candlesticks, understanding what each one represents into um, essentially paragraphs and sentences, right? Because your chart is gonna have a lot more candles than just this. But we know that this word means caution. We know that the next word after that could mean something completely different. So what you'll see us actually discuss is the totality of the pattern. And you will build up to that. You may, many of you are probably already there. Um, but the cool thing is you learn words first, like hammer and what it means, caution. And then you start to put them in sentences, very similar to learning a language. And then when you put them in sentences, they look a lot more like this. And they're multi-candlestick patterns. And this is where the power is with the candlesticks. Always keep in mind, the candlesticks, yes, they represent price um, and price is king. But at the end of the day, what they really represent is psychology. And if you can understand what the psychology is of the word, as well as the complete sentence from the chart, then you got a, a huge edge. So I'll go ahead and round it out there. So let me know if you guys have questions. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. The topping tails. Thanks, Denver Bob, for that comment. Yes, uh, tails are a huge thing with candles. Uh, we kind of briefly covered it with the hammer stick, right? But you'll see other candles that have big tails. Like here's a big tail. You see the tail there? How price, uh, whenever it gets bought up like that, it kind of pushes it higher. Uh, let me see if I can find another tail here. There's a tail here on the hourly. 
Anytime you have long wicks like that, you should be very cautious. Basically, it means that somebody's been trapped. Um, so watch out for long wicks like that. Um, of course, as you you know develop your skill set with candlesticks, you'll pick that up very, fairly quickly. Um, but wicks are very important because they signify uh, buyers that have been left behind or sellers that have been left behind. Um, you use bar charts. Most people use candlesticks. They tell the same story. Um, why do they use candlesticks versus bar charts? I think it's just a matter of vi visualization. Uh, the bar charts will tell you the same thing. Um, and, and I think Allison's the only person that I can think of in, in Simpler that uses bar charts consistently. Um, I think everybody else uses candlesticks. Um, what's kind of funny is, um, you know, I, 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 I know quite a bit about, about candlesticks, but I, I have a very hard time reading a bar chart. Um, and, you know, it's basically the same thing. It's uh, like the difference between, um, you know, um, maybe Spanish and Portuguese or something. It's very similar. Um, I, I can't read them. Well, I can, but it takes me a long, long, long time. Um, so at the end of the day, just whatever your eyes adjust to. If your eyes read, um, you know, bar charts better, that's 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 your language. And if you read candlesticks better, that's your language. At the end of the day, you're talking the same language. In Japan, a shooting star foretells badness or evil. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, how do you know open from closed? Th thanks for asking that question. So you'll see it on your candlestick. Um, if it's, uh, and, and I couldn't really detail it because I, I have a yellow marker here, but basically, let me just choose a candle here. So whenever it's white, the bottom of the body will be the open, and then that will be the close. When it's black, like uh, this one, then that was the open of that candle, that was the close, and that little wick right there at the bottom, that was the low. So it, should, it closed slightly above the low, but uh, the, the way the candle colors will tell you uh, whether the, the, the action is a high or a low. If it colors red or black, um, then you can imagine that uh, it closed at the low, and so on. What's my favorite time frame for candles? Um, hmm. I don't have one. I don't have one. Um, I'll trade any time frame. What I will say about candles is this: uh, on time frames, it, the the and it, this applies. It's it's funny how often this applies. Um, the bigger the time frame, the stronger the pattern, right? So, for example, um, let me see if I can find one. There's a little bit of an hourly kind of uh, shooting star formation here on on Amazon. You see how it kind of looks a little bit like that hammer. It's not perfect. It's I wouldn't say it's exactly a shooting star, but it's kind of close enough. Um, well, that's important on an hourly chart, right? And that's all good and well, and in my opinion, and in, in my hope, since I'm, I went from bullish Amazon to now negative deltas, I need it a little bit lower. Um, that should be a bearish candle, but it's only a bearish candle on a one-hour time frame. If you were to see this exact same candle right here on a weekly, much more significant. So I wouldn't say I have a favorite time frame, but I would say that weigh your time frames according to their length. So if you see something significant on a weekly, it carries more weight than something on a daily. Daily carries more weight than anything intraday. Uh, do you see any candlestick patterns that work the best most often percentage of the time? Um, yeah, Golden, you, you nailed the first one. Hammers and inverted hammers work very, very well. Um, that's one of the more reliable ones. Um, bullish engulfing patterns work, or, or just engulfing patterns uh, work well, um, bullish or bearish. Um, ones that I don't have a huge amount of success with uh, is Haramis. So Harami here, we didn't cover this one. This one's a little bit more advanced, um, but it looks something like this. Basically, it's an inside day. So let's say you have a big day like this. That was your, uh, you know, this is your open. This is your close. Big positive day. And then the next day you have something that looks like this. You see, it's kind of an inside day. You know, they, they call it being kind of pregnant. Um, they have all kinds of weird things because it kind of looks like this is the mom, and you know, it's kind of like a baby um, inside day. Um, I don't love these types of patterns that much. Neil can speak to them a lot more, um, but I don't find a ton of success with these. The ones that I find the most success with are the engulfing ones and the ones that are more like hammer structures, like this, inverted hammer structures, like this. 
um, at highs or lows, it's irrelevant, um, or completely bullish in, uh, engulfing candles. Um, another one that I like is uh, when there's a gap. So there's ga a lot of gap work in candlesticks. And if you it, honestly, if you go back and you look at the SPY, it actually bottomed like this. It's called an island reversal because you'll have a downtrend. And then you have a gap. Let's just put a gap here. Goes there. And then it closes back above the gap, right? So you see how it created kind of an island below the gap? Those work very well as, as well. But just to give you three off the top of my head, from strongest to le least strong, hammers tend to be the strongest, either version, inverted or, or otherwise. Uh, engulfing tends to be the second. And then something along these lines with a gap, like an island reversal, tends to be third. Do you use some candles to guess the trend? Um, no. Well, the, the beautiful thing about it is the, the trend is, 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 is printed by the moving averages, right? So the moving averages alongside with the candlesticks give us trend. For example, here on Amazon, the primary pattern that I see for this morning was a, was a kind of a, a little bit of a shooting star there. So what I do, and I'll just give you a practical example here of what I'm doing, since that is the most significant candle on this chart, this shooting star that we see here, I bracket it. So you see that? And what I expect is for the price to stay within this range. If it closes above the shooting star here, which I'm loosely calling a shooting star, if it closes above that, then I know that this pattern has been invalidated and that it will likely rip higher. However, my expectation based on what I've seen is that this pattern actually will hold and will actually take out this low and the shooting star pattern will play out. Um, so if it closes above the range, I'm wrong. The pattern is wrong and it will likely go higher. If it closes below the range, that is more prototypical of this particular candle and uh, it would imply lower. But the, the main thing to understand um, is to, or at least this is the way that I do it, is to, when you get an initial candle like this, right? You, you, you acknowledge it's an important candle and you kind of visually bracket the high and the low and you look to see what direction that breaks and in that direction the, you'll, you'll tend to get continuation. Um, I have found the candlesticks precede movements before the indicators. Is this real tape reading? Um, yeah, it can be. It can be. And you, you, I'm giving you an example here on Amazon that I think is quite good. So just this one candle here, right? You see that one candle? You can pull this up on your own, right? I'm not, there's nothing magical here. Hourly Amazon. That one candle there is guiding my behavior. Because look, all the action today has been contained within the upper and lower end of the wick. And whatever direction that breaks, um, usually it, you'll get a lot more continuation. If it breaks to the upside, that goes against the statistical probability and you will get a continuation because, well, you just, you just will. But from a probabilistic standpoint, this candle typically breaks lower. And uh, you can see here that if there's no indication it's going to break lower. It's a little overbought, but other than that, there's no indication it's going to break lower other than that one candle. Of course, you have to wait for your triggers, but I, I see what you're saying there. When making decisions based on candlesticks, is it best to let three closes before entering a position when intraday trading? Um, n that, not necessarily, Ryan. That's not the way that I view it. Let me just kind of go back to the one example I've been using, which is Amazon here. Um, which is fortunately moving in my favor. You see that one candle there? Just to go back to that one example, here's what I do. I understand that if, if I were to short something here, like let's say that I wanted to short Amazon. Okay, I get short somewhere in this range and I understand fully well that if it closes down here, I'm wrong. Or excuse me, if it closes up here as a short, I'm wrong. But given that one candle there at the open with the volume, with the gap, understanding what we just talked about, that it's basically a kind of a shooting star. The expectation should be that we take out this low. Now, you can get in anywhere in that trend or anywhere in this range. It's usually best to, you know, this is an hourly pattern, drill down to a five-minute chart to get your entry. Um, but I, no, I don't typically wait for it. Um, I If it's more indecisive, then I do think it's worthy of waiting additional candles. But when you have some... In my opinion, this is a rather clean one. And so on, in this case, you're just waiting to see what direction it breaks from the initial range created by that candle. What about sticks that's wicks that signal stop running? Um, 
Well, there's no way to tell, really, right? You know, that that's one way to interpret the, the Wix is to say that they're being stopped. Um, it doesn't change it. It doesn't change a thing. Uh, what's a good way to scan for candlestick patterns on toss? Um, I think they might actually have something like that. I just, I, I haven't done that. Um, when I first started out, I used to do that. Like, hey, let me find some hammers. Let me find some bearish engulfing, bullish engulfing, things like that. I, I lost interest in it. Um, so what I say, what I will say is this, probably don't scan for these patterns because on their own, they're just not strong enough. Keep scanning the way that you're scanning, scan for your squeezes, scan for a trend, et cetera, and then just incorporate the psychology and the language of the candles into that. It, it, it works beautifully well, right? You don't have to change a thing about what the simpler does to uh, to appreciate and uh, and get an edge from the candles. The main thing with the candles is just they're giving you a psychological edge. It's like it's like sitting across from a poker player and seeing their 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 the the vein in their neck throbbing. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, that's different. Um, you know, so it just gives you a little bit of a different look and a different psychological understanding. Uh, for the indices on a daily time frame, do these candlestick patterns tend to work better on the futures or the cash session? Um, Trista, it doesn't matter. That's the beautiful thing about it. Um, it, it. It completely does not matter. You, these candlesticks work on marshmallows, marshmallow futures. Um, the, the main thing to understand is just the bigger the time frame, the more important it is. Uh, and then to look at the entire context of the uh, of the candlesticks, right? So in, in this instance, with my one example here on Amazon, I'm um, looking at that one candle to describe the rest of the day. <laughs> and you can see how, right? You just bracket the high, the low, and you watch to see what way it breaks. The expectation is it takes out the low based on historical evidence, but nothing is 100% certain. Understand that if it takes out the high of that pattern, because it's a bearish pattern, if it takes out the high, you'll get that impulse. So that's that's what I would say. Um, up, it's up to you as to whether you do it on ES or SPX. It should. I like doing. I prefer futures because they don't stop. Um, but whatever you feel comfortable with is the right answer. They'll uh, they'll be very similar. Yeah, Jonathan, that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. So uh, I'll, I'll just maybe close soon here with this. So here's an example of a really common pattern that we all know, right? We all know this pattern, head and shoulders. This is an example of multiple, each one of these, if, keep in mind, if you, you know, this looks like lines, but these, the, these would be candlesticks, right? And so this would be a, a sentence or maybe even a paragraph written in candlesticks. So my goal today was just to teach you individual words. But if you read the book and you really start to build this out, you'll be able to read entire sentences and books written in candlesticks. And that's when it gets really cool. So yeah, Jonathan, I think that's a really cool way of looking at it. Uh, do you use any particular indicators to complement the candlesticks? Nope, I don't. Um, it, they're, uh, they're just part of my, my study set. Um, at the end of the day, I still prioritize all the rest of the stuff, but the candles sticks are there to um to tell you a little bit about the psychology that might go missed if you just use moving averages um squeeze uh momentum things like that <clears throat> you can get a psychological tell from candlesticks and that is the uh the one thing that is not easy to quantify via other indicators uh but it's better to use patterns long term uh or i'll say this they'll they'll carry more weight um, a weekly pattern carries more weight than a daily. A daily pattern does not overwhelm a weekly until the weekly changes. And that applies from a daily to an hourly or an hourly to a five minute. Uh, you could go down to a tick chart and it would still work. Okay, well, it looks like we got through all of it, guys. Thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Um, again, check out Steve Nyson's books. You might be able to find them for free, so even better. All right, guys, thank you very much for being here and I'll see you back in the gold room. Cheers. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me over.